Hi, I'm Amy Lewis with Solid Fire, and I'm here with Josh. Josh, can you introduce yourself? Hi, Amy. I'm Josh Atwell, also with Solid Fire. I'm a cloud architect focused on automation solutions. Okay, so if I say PowerShell, what do you say? <laughs> it's probably time for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you excited? We're here at Cisco Live. What are you excited to talk to customers about this week? Uh, primarily, I'm interested in obviously talking about Solid Fire and a lot of the benefits that we provide in, in the data center, especially when you're collaborating with Cisco infrastructure as well. Uh, but my passion primarily is around automation and management, you know, how to simplify that, how to move up stack, how to leverage our API, how to you know, leverage things like UCS Director, Cisco UCS, and policy-driven management. That's really what I'm hoping to talk a lot about this week at Cisco Live. So a lot of people are saying this is the year of automation. We did a poll and people, what do you think about that? Is, is it always been there or are the tools just better? What, explain this to the lay people. Sure, I, I think what we're finally seeing is that the entire breadth of the infrastructure stack is now hitting a point where it's extensible enough that automation can be applied un, uniformly across the entire stack to enable a lot more functionality that hasn't been possible in the past. Um, and you know, storage being kind of that last leg that's kind of been pulled in you know, with solid fire and a lot of stuff that I've been working on and I've been seeing our customers doing. Uh, I, I think that has really become part of the transformation and, and what's making automation um, a much broader conversation and you know and the implementation of you know the software defined data center you know tenants where you have policy driven management and you know again leveraging APIs and cross functional controls. It's really a really exciting time if you're a, a developer or as I like to refer to as an infrastructure developer because now you the world is at your fingertips. I was going to ask, is that a new job role or is it is it a traditional storage admin learning crossing over a little bit to the developer? Is it a matter of the developers are more an IT customer of the storage? What, where is that? How's that working out from the org chart? You know I love an org chart. Yeah, I think it's actually across multiple org charts. Uh, you, uh, you know, if I think about it, you know, off the top of my head, which is not entirely off the top of my head, um, you know, you've got three core you know targets that you would start considering as an infrastructure developer. You have IT people who are starting to leverage the tools and the extensibility of the infrastructure themselves to do things that, to solve you know key business problems. You have large organizations who are hiring developers to come in and do much more robust integrations, or they're doing professional services with some of the professional service organizations that are you know tied with Cisco and, and their partners and then finally you have developers who in their you know DevOps environment where they're getting into this ecosystem of they're collaborating with the infrastructure teams more they're actually contributing code and being a part of how the infrastructure gets managed developed and automated orchestrated so I, I think those are kind of the three you know attack vectors that we're starting to see that kind of leads to people becoming what I would, you know, coin an inf infrastructure architect or developer. Very cool. So automate all the things? Always automate all the things. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Josh. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. And we'll see you next time on Pop-Up Tech Talks.